So this week, uh, we'll start with organic compounds. It's a very big uh, part of chemistry, the organic chemistry. Why is it such a big part? Be simply because of the humongous plethora of organic compounds that are out there. Uh, your book says like six million, but truly there are over 10 million organic compounds that have been identified. And continuously scientists, chemists um, synthesize new compounds. So it's an enormous, enormous amount of compounds and therefore of enormous um, use to us and uh, importance. Not just because we, as, as living things are made mostly from organic compounds, but also because we use them as uh, there are fuels and uh, uh, all the plastics, you know. So they're of huge uh, importance in our everyday life. Some of this is not so good always. We know the trouble with the plastic that we faced uh, in our days. Anyway. So let us begin now with organic compounds. Uh, where does the name organic comes from, first of all? It's because it, it originates in the 19th century when um, uh, scientists uh, really understood that uh, all living things, and especially us humans, uh, are made of compounds that all of them contain carbon. So carbon compounds um, are, Truly, we can uh, claim that they are building blocks of life. And it's not just for people and other, uh, or, uh, other animals. I mean, this is true for all living things. So this is where the name organic comes from because of the living organisms that are made of this type of compounds. But the truth is that there are millions of other organic compounds today that uh, none of them exist in any living Thing. But nevertheless, they, the name organic compounds has been uh, maintained and uh, we <coughs> nobody seems to have a problem with it. So this type of, of uh, compounds that contain carbon in the, this uh, uh, long chains so or rings that we are going to meet uh, belong to this same category. Now, all these organic compounds, and we said mi millions of them, really consist of a very small number of um, uh, elements and primarily consist of carbon and hydrogen, of course, carbon and hydrogen. And there are also some compounds that have um, a few more other atoms like uh, oxygen, where some of them have oxygen, some of them have also a little bit of nitrogen. And also I forgot to ask to add here the, the highlights like um, chlorine and fluorine and iodine and bromine, the, the highlights in general, let's say highlights here. I hope you know what the highlights are, the group seven elements in other words. So, but primarily all organic compounds have carbon and lots of carbon, all of them have carbon and a lot of hydrogen. And in fact, um, it, it is uh, the, uh, any other atoms that uh, might be present in the organic compounds are actually atoms that have replaced uh, one or more hydrogens from the molecules of the, of the particular organic compound molecules. So carbon and hydrogen are the main, main ingredients by far. And uh, another characteristic of the, hydro, um, of the organic compounds um, is that molecules often have chains of carbon, of carbon atoms, chains, like long chains consisting of carbon, carbon, carbon. Sometimes we're going to meet <coughs> uh, compounds with double bonds rather than single, single bonds. But nevertheless, let us start from the simplest thing, like chains of, long chains of carbons, from very short to very long, actually, not just only long, but they, they have chains of uh, carbon atoms bonded together with the carbon atoms being always tetravalent, which means, um, if you haven't met the word before, that we, in the, the organic compounds, the carbon, the carbon, the carbon atoms that, um, is considered to be able to, to, to form four covalent bonds, four covalent bonds. That it, this is what uh, means tetravalent. It has a valency four, in other words. 
So in the organic compound, when we see a carbon, we know that it can form four bonds and uh, therefore it's easy to see if our molecule is correctly structured because we'll need to be looking at these four, the four bonds that it can form with other atoms, including other carbons. Okay, now what else can we say here? Um, we spoke about the name of organic uh, compounds and um, what makes them, um, what are the, their constituents. And that um, now another thing that becomes obvious now, since there are millions of these um, compounds, millions of all sorts of uh, shapes and sizes, and yet they're only formed out of a couple of perhaps a few more atoms like carbon and hydrogen and some other few atoms. Obviously, it's not possible to name all these compounds, each and every compound, following the, the, the technique that we have used to name compounds in inorganic chemistry. For example, in inorganic chemistry, we have sodium chloride. We know how to name it. Uh, there, we follow some rules to name inorganic compounds. So, say, I don't know, ammonium, say, sulfate, say something. We know, we, we follow certain rules to name inorganic compounds like these two above. Uh, but we cannot follow now these rules anymore to name the inorganic compounds because we only have a few atoms to <laughs> that are involved. So it becomes evident that we need a new system of naming, a new systematic naming system where um, scientists all over the world must be familiar with, with it and uh, follow the same system so that we know what we're talking about. Eh? Because imagine uh, uh, millions of them and uh, each compound must have its own name. Definitely we need some system and uh, some naming system which cannot be the inorganic naming system. So now in order for us to understand this system, let me show you some examples here. Need for a systematic name. The naming system is based, I mean the naming system that we have to use now in organic chemistry, is based upon the fact that most organic molecules have a predominantly hydrocarbon skeleton. So predominantly, um, organic molecules have um, a skeleton which is made out of uh, carbon and hydrogen. So ca because most of them are, the main ingredients are carbon and hydrogen, and therefore they are called hydrocarbons, if they are made only of carbon and hydrogen, hydrocarbons, carbons. So all, all the organic compounds in other words, ha have these main ingredients and uh, all other so they are based in hydrocarbons, in other words. And all other organic compounds that contain also some oxygen or nitrogen or some halide um, atoms and so on, is th these have been formed out of replacing a hydrogen from, the, from some hydrocarbon by some other atom. So therefore, in other, in other words, all the organic compounds are actually based on some skeleton which is a hydrocarbon skeleton of some sort. And remember, uh, I repeat that, hydrocarbons means um, a compound which is made out of hydrogens and carbons. That is where the name comes from, hydrogen and carbon. So organic compounds that are only contain carbons and hydrogens are called hydrocarbons. Okay, so all other compounds in organic chemistry which are not hydrocarbons because they have other extra atoms. Nevertheless, they are based on some kind of hydrocarbon and therefore we find the, the main hydrocarbon that uh, the compounds are based upon and we use this as the, as the uh, basis to form the name of any other compound. Now, I, I think, <laughs> This will become more obvious when we start naming in um, the first hydrocarbons. All right, so 
the name of the saturated hydrocarbon. Okay, now we see a new word here, saturated, what does it mean? With this skeleton then forms the basis of how we name related compounds. Okay, so we said that the names are based on the, uh, on, on the hydrocarbons that these organic compounds um, originate from. Now, apart from, uh, uh, from uh, the hydrocarbons now, this, we need a new concept here, the saturated hydrocarbons. Saturated are hydrocarbons in which all the bonds between carbons in the, in the molecule are all um, single bonds, in other words, of this type, of this type. Single bonds, covalent bonds, these are co covalent bonds. Uh, so whatever shape the chain of carbons have, uh, has, uh, all the, the bonds between the carbons are of this type, single bonds. We symbolize them like that. And, uh, And uh, th this type of um, hydrocarbons, in other words, are called uh, saturated hydrocarbons, saturated. So when uh, we see saturated, the word saturated hydrocarbons or saturated organic compound, whatever, means that there are no double bonds or any other type of bonds. They are all single bonds of this type, covalent bonds. Uh, whether these bonds uh, are found between carbons or between other between carbons and other atoms, but nevertheless, because we are talking about hydrocarbons only here, so these uh, single bonds will be between the carbon atoms. Of course, the carbon atoms are also joined um, are also bonded to hydrogen atoms, but with hydrogen atoms, that's not a problem because be uh, carbon and hydrogen can only be bonded through single bonds. So, okay, so here, um, I, what I have drawn here is really one example of a hydrocarbon molecule, of a hydrocarbon compound, which is also saturated, just to see that all the bonds are single bonds. So saturated means that all the bonds that we see in the molecule are single bonds, or covalent bonds. And uh, and um, this concerns the single bonds concerns particularly the bonds between carbon carbon atoms because any other bonds between carbon and hydrogen can only be single bonds so we don't need to even mention that. So anyway, this would be an example of a saturated hydrocarbon. Saturated because it has single bonds everywhere. Hydrocarbon because it's only made of carbon and hydrogen. Now. This, for example, could be a skeleton, could be the basis to name other organic compounds that might have this type of hydrocarbon as the, the, the origin. For example, we might have a, some molecule where one of these uh, hydrogens has been replaced by, by some other molecule, I don't know, two other molecules, say, by two bromine, say, by two bromine atoms, the, we see some bromine atoms having replaced the hydrogen molecules. So the name of the, when we find out how to name this type of um, organic compound now, uh, the base of our name will be the, the original hydrocarbon before the bromine atoms were um, added there. Okay, so. Um, there could be another example where another hydrogen, for example, would, could have been replaced by something else like, uh, like um, something like that, a hydroxy group. We're going to, to see what we mean by that. So you see here we have another type of um, organic compound which is not a hydrocarbon anymore, but nevertheless it is also saturated because we only see single bonds here, and uh, its name will be based on the original chain of the, of the four carbons, the four carbon chain that was at the beginning. So, um, now another thing, look at these names here. I have, 
because we were talking that the name of the saturated hydrocarbon, this skeleton uh, that forms the basis of how we name related compounds. As an example, look at this uh, one, two, three, four um, compounds, all organic compounds. Uh, it doesn't matter if you don't know how they, um, uh, what they mean. Uh, I mean, you're not familiar with this yet, but, uh, so let me find something here. Anyway, now let us look at the names. The, the top one says ethane. The next one says ethanol. The next one says chloroethane. And the last one says 1, 1, 1, 1 trichloroethane. Funny name, but we are, we are going to see it's not so difficult as it sounds. I want you to note that all of these names here have something common here. They have this this part here, this, this, is, this is common to all the names. This common part to all these names means that all these compounds actually have come out of the same basic um, uh, uh, hydrocarbon, which, uh, and this basic hydrocarbon is called ethane, like the top one. <laughs> so you see, all of these compounds are organic compounds, that uh, originate in some hydrocarbon that has this a particular structure, the, the structure of ethane. And we are going to see that now, how this um, structure of ethane looks like. Okay. So just to see that, in other words, that the name of uh, organic compounds, no matter how complicated they look like or they sound like, are actually, there are certain rules that we apply, and um, the basic rule is that the name is based on a particular skeleton of um, a saturated hydrocarbon. So now this will make more sense when we start talking about the, the most basic organic compounds, which are hydrocarbons, which remember again, hydrocarbons are made out of hydrogen and carbon only only hydrogen and carbon. We are not going to have any other atoms here. So, and um, these hydrocarbons can be, come in two varieties, either saturated or unsaturated. Saturated or unsaturated. And remember saturated, saturated, means that all the bonds that we, um, um, that we find in the, the molecules are all single bonds. In the unsaturated hydrocarbons, we are going to have uh, some carbons which will be uh, bonded with double bonds and even triple bonds sometimes, but I don't even need triple bonds, but nevertheless, double bonds. One or more will be double. So anyway, so first we'll start with the saturated hydrocarbons, which are the, the basis of the naming of all the other organic compounds. So saturated hydrocarbons first, saturated, and the, all, all the uh, saturated hydrocarbons uh, that form uh, chains, like the um, unbranched chains, are called alkanes, belong to the family of alkanes altogether. So this is like a common name of all the saturated hydrocarbons that we can uh, meet, that, which uh, form, long or short straight chains, straight chains, no branching chains, just straight chains like one carbon after the other in this uh, type of arrangement. All these types of uh, hydrocarbons will be called alkanes. Now let us see how we name these alkanes, depending on how many carbons they consist of. All right. And... Uh, We derive the name of most molecules from the names of the alkanes that uh, have the same carbon atom skeleton, okay? So we start our study of how to name organic compounds with the naming of the alkanes, right? So here we have the systematic naming of straight chain alkanes, which straight chain is like the, remember, one carbon after the other, 
joined with single bonds in one chain, unbranched, no branches, just one straight chain. So these straight chain hydrocarbons, saturated hydrocarbons are called alkanes, we said. And here we, we have, um, we start seeing the naming. So if uh, our chain is made with, of just one carbon, in this case, it's not, we cannot even call it a chain, but we have just one carbon. Remember now each carbon will have, a, has a valency of four, which means it can form four bonds. So these four bonds, we show them like that. And each of these is connected to a hydrogen atom. So this is the simplest hydrocarbon, the, the, the simplest alkane that we can get. And its name is methane. So the important root of the word is this myth here. So the name is methane. You see all these alkanes, all these uh, hydrocarbons of this type, end in ane. This is the end of the name. So the first part of the name, the root of the name, in the case of the first simplest um, alkane, is the methane. And so methane, which is the ending. This is the systematic name. So all of them end in ane, if you look at this. So this would be the methane, the first, uh, the first one. This would be its structure. And uh, this is how we could represent its molecule. And uh, with one carbon, all right. Now the next, the next alkane in the series will be obviously one that has two carbons, isn't it? So if we were to add another carbon there, and when I say a carbon also with the accompanying uh, hydrogen, eh? so the next alkane would have two carbons, and of course we must count all the bonds, must be four all around it, and the remaining uh, bonds will be with hydrogen. This would be the next alkane. And uh, the, um, the root of this alkane, second in the series, starts with ethane, ethane. So this is called ethane. And this is uh, its structure. And uh, here is uh, how we could write the molecule of uh, methane with two carbons and uh, six hydrogens. Obviously, in the case of the methane, there's no, the structure <laughs> that you see here with the molecular formula is the same. Now, the next obviously will be with three uh, carbons, the next will, with four and so on. And uh, so with, when we have three carbons, the root is prop, prop, propane. The alkane will be called propane. The next will be butane, pentane. Now pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, dec decane. Now from uh, the five onwards, all these names now actually, uh, come from the Greek root of the numbers five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pentane, because in Greek five is pent, pente. And um, the exane with six carbons is because the Greek name for six is exi. So exane, eptane, octane, and so on. So you need to remember some of these names now by heart. You need, especially the, uh, the up to butane at least, you need to remember them by heart. You need, so it's not much really to, to learn, it's only these four. And um, okay, we, we're going to meet some of these as well. Uh, when we meet them, we can remind ourselves how many <laughs> carbons they have. But the methane, methane, propane, and butane, you have to learn them by heart, okay? So you know the but is about four prop, with three carbons, eth with uh, two carbons, and meth with one carbon. So look at this now. Okay, here are the molecules. The, the, this is the propane with the three carbons, the butane with the four, pentane with the five, and so on. Uh, but okay, these are the molecular formulae of this type of hydrocarbons, but I must tell you that in organic chemistry, the molecular formulae are not so useful as other type of um, formulae that show more of the structure of the organic compound. Simply because many organic compounds might have the same formula, but uh, they look very different. 
the, the arrangement of the atoms is very different. So this molecular formula, although we need to know how to figure it out, is not as important as other structural formulas like this one. So you see the structure here. Let, let us understand the structure before we stop on um, class again. Look at, uh, at this ethane, for example. Here we have the ethane, how we could draw its structure. Uh, and look how they have written it here in this type of uh, formula. So you see, it's a carbon, carbon with its hydrogens and another carbon with its hydrogens. So this is another way to represent the same molecule of ethane. Okay, and um, it's, it's good to be able to, to write down this uh, structure of uh, the molecule. And this will be much more useful than the molecular formula. Molecular formula. And there are other ways to represent the um, organic compound molecule, but we are going to see them one step at a time. So for the time being, um, I just hope that you understand that we need to, the name of an organic compound has a root and then um, an ending which is characteristic of the type of the compound. In this case, ain is the characteristic of alkanes. So remember now, alkanes, straight chains, and the hydrocarbon saturated, all single bonds. That is enough for the first lesson, okay? So th that will be enough for starters, guys. We need to continue now next week, okay? I hope it wasn't too difficult up to now. Eh? It's not difficult, it's kind of very, new, very different kind of uh, molecules and structures we're going to see, but otherwise they're not difficult, okay? <laughs>